Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may, some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Grace's Path. Also, y'all, I have been asked to cover. I have been asked by the devs of a game called Mouth uh, Mice T to cover their to cover their visual novel. It's apparently uh, got a lot of references to Changeling Tale, and uh, it's a furry uh, transformation visual novel. Very much looking forward to checking that out. Look forward to the next couple days. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> the wind whips through my hair, and cliffs zip by on a blur. Then as we come around the corner of a cove at breakneck speed. Watch out! Can't be- oh my god. Can't be too loud, y'all. Major sleeping. Hi, to Hi, Doug. <laughs> Crashed back down into the water. Her tail pressed tight against me to keep me from flying off. Heh. <laughs> I gasp for air and we reemerge. My heart beating out of my chest. Sensing I've had enough, Grace ferries me gently back to our beach. What a rush, eh? Waterlogged and exhausted, I can't help but laugh. I thought you said we'd take, it, take things at my speed. Your speed is boring. Besides, I can tell you were having fun. I was, I was. It was a kick to the seat of my pants, for sure. I laugh as I continue to rub salty water off my eyes and forehead. Almost like having the freedom to fly. There's no better comparison. Oh, Malcolm, it's so exhilarating to be able to swim like this. I just wanted to share it with you. My knuckles are still wide from the adventure. Just warn me next time. Aww. Gosh, she's so adorable. Grace laughs and, pat and paddles circles just offshore, still full of energy. I can't help it, I'm in my element. She undeniably is. As I watch her form splashing about, I wonder once, I wonder once again at, at how much she's grown. Malcolm, I see the way you're looking at me. There's a lot to take in, is all. I'm still getting used to the new you. Well, by all means, drink it all in. Heh. <laughs> Naughty girl. Oh my god. Pulls herself up onto the beach and angles herself quite seductively. My heart rate quickens as she pats her haunch. Perhaps you'd like to take a ride here on the beach. Oh my god. Her hungry eyes send shivers through me. I want... I want this. Badly, but I can't shake off an uneasy feeling. I'd love to, but... I'd best be getting back to Hazel. Hazel? Huh. As Grace slips over, she looks at me like I'm out of my mind. Maybe I am. Oh, of course. How can I compete with that classy mare? Oh, it's not like that. Malcolm, dear, I'm not dense. What's wrong, truly? You can tell me. I don't know if I should. What if she doesn't understand? I'm not sure I understand myself. All I know is that if I don't explain the reason behind my hesitation, the scene will replay again and again. Do you remember the things Douglas said about your nature? Your size? Uh, how could I forget? Grace rolls her eyes and tries to reassure me. Don't worry about the ramblings of a su superstitious sailor. He wouldn't know an I uh, wouldn't know an uh, Uglefist from a sardine. Uglefist. Maybe, but he seems to be. He seems to enjoy doing his research. Is that what I am? A research specimen? You're quite a bit different from the rest of us, Grace. <laughs> In all of the good ways. Oh. Finally, come out and say it, Grace. What if you keep changing, growing? What if on this one point he's right? Hmm. She gets up to look down at her own body, smiles and shrugs. It doesn't feel like something that would bother me in the slightest. Her smile turns upside down. But it would bother you, wouldn't it? Can you blame me? What, what if I were ten times your size? Wouldn't you be intimidated? Grace licks her lips. It's actually quite tempting. Grace, you're not, you're not being realistic and you know it. No, you're right, but we don't know if there are more any if there are more chances to come. She hesitates as if, like me, she doesn't want to offend. Malcolm, don't you see? It doesn't matter to me. I know in my heart what's best for me, my destiny, and I'll always be Grace. Whatever the future has in store for me, for us, you know what? It can't be worse than our past. A thousand unbidden memories flood in, and I believe her, even if the sentiment is bittersweet. I've never known what my future would look like. Only that I hope it would include us, together, for this transformation. Hmm. 
What does that say? Long for the ride. Okay, still on that one. I voiced my heaviest concern. I'm worried if it goes any further, it may drive us apart. I can tell the grace is taken aback. M Malcolm, I... She closes her mouth, as if pondering how to respond. Please tell me. What do you mean, drive us apart? Uh, for one thing, it's already difficult for you on land. If you keep growing, what if you can't come ashore at all? What if this lock does, indeed, become too small for you? So far, your changes. Improvements! Very well, you're very well. Your improvements are harmless. Welcome, even. But if you're too large to live nearby, how will we live together? I've been trying very hard to be supportive of Grace's experience and living out her new form. I worry now that all this outpouring of fear may sound like a betrayal. Malcolm, what if your body changed? I'm struck by the change of subject. Like yours. I don't think that's going to happen, Grace. We don't know that for certain. That's a fantasy, not a reality. Your change um, improvements aren't mine. Right, but think about it if think about it if if it were only you changing. I think you'd be jealous. Her light laugh relieves some of the tension. And I would still love you. And I would do anything I had to do to be with you. I promise you that. I mull over the idea that she would uh, that she would abandon life on shore to travel the seven seas with her fish boyfriend. Admittedly, I know she would. So why don't I do the same for her? I know, I believe you, but if you get bigger, we don't exactly don't exactly know what it would take to be with each other. Grace has her answer already. We'll have your ship. You can follow me wherever I go. I can't, Grace. I can't follow you wherever you go. At best, I can stay close, but is that really being together? It's something I regret saying as soon as the words tumble out of my mouth. It clearly hurt. I never minced, I've never minced words, Malcolm. You know I can't give you a normal life. I'm sorry, I know that. I treasure what we have here now. I love floating on the water with you. And spending time at the beach... I even love all the adventures you take me on, no matter how waterlogged I am afterwards. Grace's stoic facade cracks as little as she can't quite stuffle a giggle. I just don't know what to do. I only know I don't want to lose what we have now. Grace thanks for a moment. I understand, I do, but... I don't think you have nothing, anything to worry about. If anything changes... Improves. <laughs> yes. If anything improves, then we'll address it then. I don't want to look towards the future where you're scared of me. I want to enjoy the present, please. I just need some time, a breather. Away from me? No, just away from the excitement. A slower pace. I have to dip my toes into this relationship, so to speak. It's new for it's new for me to be so close to someone. I also want to take time to appreciate that, our new love. Of course, Malcolm. I promise we take things at your speed. I'm relieved, but sense the disappointment in her tone. Just don't worry about what's out of our control. Herein lies the problem. I worry it is my it is it, it is in my control, all of it. All the changes, the improvements, the growth, me losing grace to the sea. I'll try. Go on then. Get back to your Hazel. I'm sure she's needing you now. I hesitate to leave on this note, so I bring up one more subject. You know I told Agnes about us. Grace makes the happiest grin I can picture. Oh my, what did she say? Does she want to see me again? See me swim? Maybe I could tour her around on a boat. This is fantastic, Malcolm. I'm gonna pause it right. Oh, one second, y'all. One second. No regret saying anything. Grace thinks I told Gran about her improvements. Alas, the lying by omission has caught up with me. Well, you see, I only mentioned we were a couple. Not my... She sways as she wags her tail, splashing some water up. I shake my head, turning red from embarrassment. Oh, well, thank you for at least sharing something with her. I don't think Gran would mind your flipper. She's elderly as all. One surprise at a time. Someday, she'll get to see them. Of course. This conversation is dipped back into the uncharted waters of what is to come between us. Now I sincerely believe we both need to t both be time to think things over. Grace, I want everything to keep going the way it is. No steps backwards. No steps forward. Just the same, for a while. When I hold her gaze, I finally see us again. Two hearts in love. I don't want this to become a source of contention. I simply want to stop padding or stop paddling against the current, even if briefly. Anything you want, Malcolm. Oh, Lovely fishwife. 
After a few lingering kisses, I walk off toward home, telling myself nothing will sour between us. But as Grace glides quickly across the locked surface in the opposite direction, I wonder, do I truly believe that, or is it just wishful thinking? Wishful thinking. <laughs> Fishful thinking. I like landlubber thinking. Water. Alright. I got water. Oh lord, it's Hazel. Miss Hazel. Easy now, careful of your footing. The stones are loose. Hazel neighs at me as if to say she knows what she's doing and that she hates it. Hey, at least I'm not making you hold a mast. I said I've loaded Hazel's cart with a hodgepodge of tools and materials once destined to repair the homestead. Truth be told, I've no clue if they'll be useful to repair the ship. Useful or not, they're a peace offering after yesterday's exchange. Repairing this wreck means a lot to Grace, and I'm willing to give it a go, even if I've no idea how to go about it. It may not be farm work, but I'm sure Graham would approve. Fixing any damage between Grace and me would mean more to Agnes than any other, man any other menial chore at home. It dawns on me that Grace herself is now my home. It's my duty, our duty, to keep it in good, healthy shape. Yee. Oh, Lord. Alright, that's far enough, girl. I help off the saddle and situate the reflective vase to signal Grace, and begin to unload Hazel's cart. It's not long before I see a swirl of eddies coming towards us. Oh, God, poor Hazel. Need help with that. Oh god. Grace emerges, Hazel's eyes go wide, and the horse unleashes a terrified Winnie. Easy now. Oh, Miss Hazel, you remember me, right? My mare's eyes my mare eyes Grace skeptically. This must be the first woman she's laid eyes on larger than she is. But I see her nose twitch and her hackles drop, as Grace's familiar kelp scent wafts past. A horse never forgets. That's right. Who's a good lass? Aye. I miss our rights together. Hazel blinks and huffs in agreement. It hits me again deep in my gut, but those days of riding together are so far gone. Grace will never wrap her lithe arms around my waist from behind, whispering my ear to go whispering in my ear to go faster. The days on land are just that, mine alone. Relationship. Besides, I bet Grace could possibly crush anything she might try to ride. A shudderance. I still let my imagination run wild. Um, so how was your daily swim? Oh, fine. I did some exploring. Found a nice big sponge that'll be great for scratching some hard-to-reach places. She winks and I feel myself go red. What's new with... What's new with you? Not much. It's the same old routine. Looking after the herd. After Gran. The old back-breaking labor thrown in. If it's something close to shore, I can try to help. Much obliged, I'll keep that in mind. Grace seems amiable enough. She's being so quieter, curter, than usual. I'm not sure what to say, and it's making a conversation feel stilted. I uh, fetch some tools for the kelpie. As I resume unloading, Grace holds up one of the wooden planks I'd bought. I'd brought. What is this? Um, some nice sturdy oak. Malcolm, yonder, yonder, you dunderhead. There's nothing wrong with the ship's timbers. It's her deck that needs repairing, and that's teak. I blink. Since when do you know so much about hardwood? I can see Grace stifle a laugh. The bowl at home, the large one. My mother's grandfather brought it home from Andalusia. We were never to touch it. Father said the teak was rarer than gold. I don't think that's entirely true. It didn't matter much to us girls, anyway. We wear it around like a fa we wear it around the farm like a helmet when we played house. We. Oui. All right, me. I was always the dog or the prisoner of war. The soldier could wear a bowl. The dog could drink out of it. I made good use of that antique. Unsurprisingly, it sounds like Grace got the short end of the stick when playing with her siblings. Grateful to be an only child, I returned to the subject at hand. Well then, where do you suppose one would find teak in actor Craig? Don't worry about that just yet. Let's get started on pulling up the damaged, the damaged strakes and take things one step at a time. Strakes? The deck boards, landlubber. Don't you read any of that book I gave you? I am skimmed it. Why don't you take the lead? Oh my god, I'm so tired. Oh, what? 
Oh, who good image is in this? I take the lead, she does. With our project at least underway, Grace for the most part falls back into her usual behavior. Quiet and resolute, as if laboring alone in her actual preference. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Yeah, I think this will be good enough. Alright, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you're super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!